Firstly, I would like to show you a video. Uh, are common between uh, myself and yourself, I mean between both of us. There are two things which are very common. Can you guess what it is? Any guesses? Yeah, that's one thing is a good guess. I mean, uh, every one of us who has a mobile with us, right? Every one of us are or is a photographer, for sure. And the second thing is, I come from an engineering background as well. <laughs> So, uh, I did my engineering and I even uh, pursued my MBA as well and I worked for IT and uh, yeah, now uh, see, I come from these backgrounds, right, so I am very good at presentations. So, <laughs> so, you have to bear me with my presentation now. Uh, so, I would like to uh, uh, share my journey in two, three parts, I mean, see, the deeper you fall, the higher you rise generally. So I would like to uh, share with you the journey of my fall, the biggest fall I had in my life. So every one of us generally when we start in our childhood, right, everyone were like, most of us especially, were like toppers in our school days and all. We were the most pampered kids. And uh, I was the same too. Uh, I never had the opportunity to stay with my parents in my childhood because uh, the educational system over there was not so great. So I had to live with my grandparents in my in a in a in Vizag over there. So I I always used to have this feeling of why am I not staying with my parents? Uh, then after some years, I mean I was put up in hostel because I mean uh, my parents couldn't afford me better education at that point in Vizag as well. So I was put up in Korakonda Sainik School over there. So uh, I I was studying there till my ninth standard. And my confidence was really low in my childhood because I mean I always used to have this feeling of being thrown away from parents. The similar Tare Zameen Par Darshil Safari types. <laughs> so that was uh, one moment where uh, I was very badly hit. So firstly I would like to uh, take you through a couple of things. Uh, so any guesses who he is? So, he is born on 5th November 1988 and uh, another miracle happened a week before and I am born. <laughs> so, that happened a week before 
And after that, I mean, uh, this is my first encounter with a camera. So there's an uncle who was sitting beside, uh, who was our neighbor, who was a photographer as well, and who was owning a photo studio at that time. So I was his experimental subject. Whenever he goes, he gets that mood of clicking, right? He would ask me to come in, and he would try. He would be experimenting with me. So this is my first encounter with camera in my childhood, where I still remember uh, this. This photo uh, is framed in my house, and it's of like this big size. So uh, this is my first encounter with camera, as far as I remember in my life. And next comes, I mean, this myself in my B.Tech days. That's again me. And I'm not like 15 kgs or 20 kgs lighter at that time. But this point is the point where uh, the life took a different turn. So it's not only uh, I was pursuing my B.Tech from VIT. Uh, I had another question. How many of you have uh, backlogs? Backlogs, come on. Yeah, yeah, it would be very proud to say now, but... So I had nothing less than 22 backlogs at that point. 22 is like two years of your engineering. All I could pass was first year engineering workshop, second year environmental studies. <laughs> Only these two. And those two as well because engineering workshop, no, uh, the, the attendance thing wasn't such a big matter over there. Environmental studies, especially because of one of my, one of the lecturers who was actually motivating me a lot to come out of certain things which had shook me down during those days. And I was passing through a phase of uh, depression from that time on. I mean, for around some seven to eight years, I was so much into that phase where a lot of people came into my life to motivate me. Uh, and uh, this is my father and this is my mother. Uh, I wouldn't be on this stage today if it was not for them. Uh, and he's a landlord. He left everything, whatever he had at that moment, to come with me, to stay with me, to take care of me. And I was like, I was, I never used to even talk to them properly. See, generally, whenever we are in our colleges as well, when we get a call from our mothers, fathers, brothers, or someone, the way we talk, right? Ah, uh, pitesta, uchesta. So we take it very easily. I mean, we don't even give back a reply pro properly to them. So I was also in that phase in my engineering days when I was going through a lot of these things. Uh, but it was these people who stood behind me at that time and who made all the way from what they had and they had to come and stay with me and they made sure that I had my degree in my hand at that time. And uh, for people who are very bad at their English, right, their communication skills or something, broken English, which is a myth, right? I mean, many people would be fearing from that uh, before we give our interviews as well. I'll tell you something, broken English can also be an inspiration for you. You know what my father was doing when he was like running behind me in my college days? The only thing was, he used to go to each and every lecturer. He used to say like, sir, only one son, merit student, Please help. This is the only three lines in broken English he used to tell. That line is something which inspired me the most in my lifetime. And from there, my reconciliation period started happening. And uh, especially, uh, and he is my lecturer. He is the only lecturer who was trusting or believing in me at that time. And I'll come back to the story at a later point. And when I started working back on my academics and everything, right? Uh, I was a mechanical engineer, so uh, I started working on some projects and all. And uh, these were some ex I mean, some candid moments of like that project. Really, the motor started working right that moment. It was so. And how photography started in my life was when I joined my MBA. Uh, there was this lecturer who was supposed to be the HOD, just like another all your HODs. She was a HOD over there, and she called me one day and asked me like. Prithvi, why don't you cover this uh, orientation program which is happening? And it was the first day of our MBA college. That's the moment when I was like, okay, let me grab this opportunity only to impress her, impress the lecturer out there. That's when she brought this camera and kept it in my hand. So this is the first camera which, which I was using and I never owned a camera for the next two, two, three years. And 
I was making images using this camera, which was one of my friend's camera. So all through those two years, to two to three years, I was using only my friend's cameras. So one takeaway from this thing is, if you are passionate enough to pursue your whatever you want to do, as someone was saying in the morning, be it MSN Karthik's 5500 example or anything, you just need to look out for people around. There are people to help you around with what all you, you have made good friends of. So these are few of my friends who helped me by just giving their cameras to me for the initial couple of years, though I couldn't afford to buy a single camera. So uh, like everyone, even I was uh, shooting all sunsets at the beginning point. We are all sunset and sunrise fans, right? We all start with that. So this one sunset which is very special to me because uh, out of some curiosity or anxiety, I just started sharing this image what I made in my college with some other colleges during their competitions. So this one, uh, when they started uh, going to different colleges and it being picked as the winner for that competition, that's one moment when I slowly started gaining my confidence back. That moment is that uh, moment where I started feeling good about myself. Till then it was all my low face and one thing which I found it for myself over this journey was every person should have a hobby. If we are not having a hobby, it's it's our mistake to blame the way we are living in or anything. So inculcating a hobby is a must is something which I found for myself. And from then on, I started pursuing this in a much serious way. And I was going through depression as I was telling you. So I wanted to uh, see the world in a much brighter manner and colorful manner. So that's when I started getting into the streets of Hyderabad and everywhere. And that's from that point I started making these images. Uh, be it the Charminar on the night of Eid from the Yunani hospital, the bazaar over there. And to my surprise, these images all made it to all, everywhere. In social media, they made it to everything. So uh, with that inspiration uh, and myself being an introvert, I, I just wanted to make myself close to people. I never used to talk to people a lot before. So some, some of my relatives used to come to my house as well, I used to run into my room. So from that state, I was trying to make that relationship with human beings, I mean for the first time. That's when I decided like, let me get into the crowd. Let me embrace the chaos, what is available over there. That's when I started getting onto the streets. And when I made this, the Ganesh Visarjan thing, after all this is shot, the moment I was, I mean, I took a break for five minutes and I was thinking a question in my mind. What would be the Papa's opinion now, during the Visarjan, that he is leaving and leaving us and going? So that moment when I was seeing, I saw this hand rising from that water saying, no matter what happens, I am always going to be there with you all. So these small, small details, or the fears, everything what you have, right? When you when you pursue your dreams or when you have your thoughts as pure as, God will help you in finding them, for sure. It might be late for some time, but you will definitely reach the positions which, which you always wanted to get to. And these are a couple of images made during uh, Pushkaralu uh, in Rajmandri. And this at uh, Holi Barsana. This is the point where I felt like, okay, let me get to this Barsana Holi and end up that colorful thing because I traveled with color for so much time now for around one and a half year. That's one point where I started feeling like, okay, I think I had seen a good number of things and I felt like I'm, I started gaining back my confidence. That's when I started thinking of getting into a different form of photography. And I always, as I always say, every genre of photography counts. It's not only the weddings, it's not only the landscape, it's not only the street photography, macro, every form of photography counts, seriously counts. So that's when I wanted to venture into wedding photography. And I was showing you the lecturer, right? All of a sudden, after five, six years, he comes back to me saying that, Prithvi, you are doing very well in photography, so I want you to cover my daughter's wedding. So I was supposed to capture her wedding as well. 
and this is the first wedding shot which I took in her wedding. So it's all a cycle which comes back to you, which comes back to you at some point of time in your life again. And that's how I again started getting into the wedding photography as well. And after this, so this is something which I always felt for. I mean, a picture or a photograph for me is something like <coughs> listening to some nice music or reading a nice poem or listening to some nice lyrics. I always related photography with some, some different art form as well, linked up with that. So uh, that moment is when I started pursuing landscape photography. And from there on, I never looked back. I mean, it really helped me in healing up so many things. So for example, is it working? Yeah, so I had a uh, shot of this before where the dog wasn't there in the frame. So I was looking for some, I was patiently sitting there waiting for something to happen. I was not very happy with that shot which I made. Then all of a sudden, this dog comes and poses for you. I mean, you, you don't plan for anything, it comes and poses for you. So that's what I mean. Being patient is something which I learned again from photography as well. So uh, this is another shot which we made at uh, Somariri Lake. Uh, this is another uh, one special shot for me because though it was looking so bright over there, the temperatures over there was 2 degrees and it was horrible to wake up and get to that lake side in the early in the morning. So uh, <laughs> Since engineering days, when our presentation comes up, right, <laughs> there will be some kind of technical glitch. <laughs> so, this one shot, I mean, I am I'm very fond of uh, shooting from flights. I mean, I had a fear of heights in my childhood. How I conquered that was, whenever I was traveling from a place to place, right, shooting from flights was my favorite hobby after a while. So, it helped me conquer that fear as well. And all through that, I mean, <coughs> so and when it comes to patience, this is another shot which I like to share. Uh, we know that I mean this in Hyderabad again. For this to happen, I mean, four months prior to the shot, I got to see sun setting at some different point in the city. So that's when I planned like, okay, might be after some couple of months. This might come into the horizon line. That's when I planned for this shot. And what landscape photography teaches you is to stay patient, to do your things consistently on a regular manner. And take your own inspirations. But one thing what I, what I was learning or what I was trying to make it out was having my own eye for myself. So Taj Mahal, I mean anyone who goes to Taj Mahal or anyone you ask in this world would say Taj Mahal is the most beautiful place, right? But once you go there, I mean you should have your own eye towards it. So that's when uh, I started experimenting with a lot of compositions as well. And certain things like this, uh, this shot at Hampi and he's a 90 year old priest who is doing the Puja to that Badawalinga over there for the past 85 years. So, who can be more consistent than him? So, and portraiture for me was very tough to take because I, I, whenever I was pursuing that, right, I mean, whenever I wanted to capture the portrait of a person, I only used to click the shutter button only when I used to feel that person or someone sharing some thought or communicating some idea to you. The moment I saw this girl on the street uh, in Nasik Kumamela, the only thing which was 
coming up to my mind was education is my right right so it shook me very badly and uh, it took me some time to again get back into portraiture for a while and uh, in munnar i mean we wanted to make some portraits over there as well but i didn't wanted to go with this what i tried was i asked this person to pose in that mirror every one of us have a different face right i mean we are not exactly the same person whom we portray on to into the world we all of us have a different face too that's why i named this as the demon within <laughs> And that's when I mean, uh, I mean, when I was pursuing all these different forms of photography, one thing which which get back to me was, when do you seriously have to consider getting into, or uh, when should you turn your passion into your profession? That's the big question now. So I'll tell you, you don't need to get approvals from your parents, society, friends. i mean they are all opinions opinions would be there after you die as well people make opinions about you so the only thing which i took for myself is when you are confident about the work you are doing in when you are confident about the body of work you are creating that moment right uh, the siren bell will ring it will tell you pursue what your passion is so though i was working as an it analyst i was never happy that i was working as an it analyst i was very very proud to say that i could balance out my time for being as an analyst as well as being a photographer so all i would like to say here is it's completely okay to balance out both the things after doing your engineering if someone wants to be a dancer someone wants to be a photographer someone wants to be something doesn't need to be like you have to stop studying today itself and uh, go and apply somewhere over there everyone has to finish up their basic educations and when the bell rings for you that okay you are very confident enough of what you wanted to pursue that's the moment only when we have to go for it that's when when i started uh, thinking about okay i i mean i started feeling confident about the body of work what i'm making that's moment uh, i was thinking about where should i head now so i do all kinds of photography i mean i do portraiture i do weddings i do landscape i do street i do food at at times so one thing which came to my mind was i think i should be getting into stock photography which which caters to everything that's when uh, i joined pixi uh, and over there i mean i'm proud to say i took the first challenge of photographing indian army so i would like to show a couple of things what i did in the month of january for indian army we shot it exclusively for indian army this remains to be my most favorite shot again because uh, he is a soldier who is coming from the kargil area and it's his one month old baby and he met his baby at the headquarters over there in delhi so these are the stories which keep you moving at times and photography is something that it's it's beyond that uh, camera it's beyond the techniques it is that emotion which connects humans it is that emotion which should make us better human beings at the end of the day and as i always say try to make good photographs not the beautiful ones because beautiful ones happen when you are in pursuit of your good photographs beautiful ones will come once in a while but good photographs are something which will stay forever thank you